When you hear the word hacker, you probably think one person in a dark room wearing a hoodie, right? <laughs> That's the image we see in the movie. Uh, the long genius typing a furiosity commands and all that to break into system but that's not a real story the real story is bigger you know and it is much more organized it is not about individual it is about the entire country yes we are talking about the cyber warfare Let's discuss what is cyber warfare first because before understanding this case study and documentary you need to know what is cyber warfare. Cyber plus warfare. Cyber mean what? Digital. By instead of doing an attack on the land, on the water, on the sky, we using a computers and using the computer to launch an attack. Just imagine my neighbor country. If they want to do attack, they do the attack with the help of land, with the help of air, with the help of water and with the help of satellite. But instead of that, they're using a computers. They're hacking our computers and by which they want to disrupt the nation. And that is why today we're going to discuss about the entire cyber warfare real use case, which give you an idea about how one country prepared the cyber warfare for the other country, how this works, how the company, how the country is basically plan their strategy. Okay, hold on, let me give you a real example, what that mean. Imagine, okay, imagine you are in the middle of the winters in Kiwi, which is the capital of Ukraine. I'm talking about real story, okay? It is a freezing cold and suddenly there is a light goes out. The heat goes also off. So not in a one house, but in the turn of thousand homes. And this was not a storm or a technical fault. It was a cyber attack. In 2015, again in 2016, the operators hundred of miles away use a place of malware to remotely open the circuit breaker in Ukraine power station and plugging over a tool like 30,000 people into the darkness. A few click of the mouse caused a real world blackout and that is the reality of the modern conflict. And I've spent the last 18 years watching these activities and trying to understand the instrumental of national power. And it affects all of us. And more than we realize, it is a power in our home, the money in our bank, even in the information what we see online. And all it depends on the system that is a part of a hidden battlefield. And today, some of the most powerful tools are not a bomb or jets, but a computer program. So how the country get ready for this kind of a cyber conflict? It is a very big effort and huge national project. And to make it easy to understand, I can break down the five main part, the five building block, uh, every major nation will prepare to become a cyber power and how they basically plan their cyber warfare. So the first part is the plan, how the country plan their activity, which we also call doctrine. It's a legal word. This is the most important first step. It is basically talk about why. So before country write a single line of code, it has to decide what is the goal in a cyberspace. Think of it like a building a sports team, right? What is the strategy to win? Are you building a team or that's all about defense, like a great goalkeeper in a football? Just focus on protecting your own goals or are you building an aggressive offensive team? Just like, you know, Star Striker, which is designed to constantly attack and score. So different countries have a different plan based on the places in the world. The electric example, United States, for example. So they have a plan to defend forward. They follow the defend forward strategy. That means they will play the game on the other team side of the field. A real example is how cyber, US Cyber Command has publicly stated that they have conducted operation to disrupt the computer infrastructure of criminal ransomware gang overseas before those gang can launch an attack against the American hospitals and business. Simple is they basically go to other country and target there. So then you have a doctrine like Russia, which is often part of a hybrid warfare. Then a mixed cyber operation with the political, economics, military action to create a confusion. And the classic case of is Estonia in 2007. When Estonia government decided to move Soviet era status, a massive wave of cyber attack was unleashed and the website of the parliament, the bank, the media, all were knocked offline. And they paralyzed the country for a day. And it has a clear political message sent through the digital mean the china also planned the same thing called information warfare it focused on using information to become stronger and the most famous example you know the opm hack where the chinese state sponsor attackers stole the personal data of over 21 million u.s government employees the goal was not just to have to plan the data it was to build a giant database to understand who worked where who has a security clearance and who might have a personal problem that could be used to blackmail them to become a spy and it is a long-term strategy investment in the intelligence so main plan of the activity is to guide all the action and decide what kind of a cyber army they build so do you notice something here so every country when they plan any kind of a cyber warfare 
okay they have to understand why they doing that if my neighbor country doing an attack on me they are very clear about the purpose if the us doing an attack on any other country there is a purpose so without purpose they cannot plan anything and that is how the cyber warfare works so the plan is nothing without people the second part is the team so today there is a huge global search for people with the advanced computer skills and countries those are serious about their systems they want to find the right set of people and they want to train them and these systems start early they have a funding program which is happening in the universities which they create a national competition like capture the flag event where the young people can test their hacking skills governments scout this competition closely and looking for the brightest mind but they also run a massive international training exercise the best example is nato's locked shield locked shield exercise it is like a olympic of cyber defense every year the team from dozen of countries over 3000 experts in total they have they come together to defend a fictional country entire digital infrastructure from a constant barrage to a realistic attack and it is most intense cyber training in the world can you imagine but they also have a clever and more shadowy way of working they often use a outside hacker group to do a job which we call as a proxy think of it's like a rich businessman hiring someone to do the dirty job for their hands so say they clean they basically target the competitors and the powerful real world example is a lazarius group from the north korea and this is a state sponsored team of hackers but they act like a criminal enterprise they were responsible for the huge hack against the sony pictures in 2014 for the political reason but they are also responsible for some of the biggest bank and the cryptocurrency heist in history like you know you heard about i'm, I'm sure theft of over 600 million dollars from the ronian bridge crypto platform so the north korean state used a single group to conduct the political attacks and steal money to fund the regime all while maintaining thin layer of the denial so now we're going to talk about the tool so you have you know tool are the most important part because in cyber security in cyber crime what we do we use crime against the computer and we use computer for a crime and here the computer is act like a tool the softwares act like a tools the application are act like a tool so in this attack the actual computer program used in an attack so countries have a secret labs where they the team look for the research they look for the weakness in the software which all use in every day let's take an example okay so if the country a want to do attack on country b so they will check which is a popular tool used in that country okay the tool used by the uh, by the manufacturing sectors hospital e-commerce and all that because they know very well if they target those infrastructure it can basically create a lot of losses so every country has a research lab they actually do the regular research on finding a vulnerabilities on this area so that they can able to exploit and sometime they find a special kind of weakness that no one else the world knows about that not even the company that made the software and this is called as a zero day Zero day is the ultimate secret key, and the story of one of the most famous zero day called a uh, eternal blue, which shows how dangerous this tool can be. It was a powerful weakness in a Microsoft Windows, and reportedly discovered by the NSA in US. But in 2017, it was stolen and leaked online by the group called Shadow Brokers, again APT group. And suddenly, this military grade cyber weapon was available to everyone, and it was quickly used by the North Korean actors to create a WannaCry ransomware attack. And you know about that, which. spread across the globe and in the matter of hours and it encrypts the computers at hospital in UK and forcing them to cancel the surgeries and you know it hit the factories and business over the 150 countries and that's the life cycle of the single tool created by the state and stolen and then unleashed in the world so using this keys the country built two main kind of a harmful program the first are for spying it is basically like a silent tool mean to stay hidden for a long time and capture all the activity and second is called as a destructive tool and devastating example is not pitya from 2017 it started an attack aim at ukraine and disguised as a software update for a particular accounting program and you know what it was designed to spread uncontrollably and it jumped from ukraine to the rest of the world and became the most financially damaging cyber attack in the history and it caused over you know how much 10 billion in damages can you imagine it also shut down the global shipping companies like mercek and stopped the production at pharmaceutical company like merek and also crippled the logistic plants like a fedex and it was a digital weapon which caused the real physical infrastructure worldwide hack the next part is a very important show how deep this all goes it is all about getting ready in the past getting ready for a conflict mean moving soldiers to the borders but do you know what 
Today it means putting a code inside another country which is the most important computer system. Every major country is secretly trying to get the foothold inside the computer network for their rival and this is called as a pre-positioning. It means they gain access to the critical system like a power grid, water companies and transportation network and they place a small sleeping piece of a code inside that. And the code does not do anything, you know, it does not do anything, it just sit there dormant and waiting it is about not about spying it is secretly installing a light switch inside the computer or com you know country power company and i'll give you a real example of that i'm not sure it is true but as per document the real world example of this we have seen in india right which has happened in 2020 a mumbai power outage which caused a blackouts across a city a threat intel firm reportedly finding a chinese malware inside the control systems of various indian power grid asset while it is, it is politically sensitive to draw a directing line, it is the most high profile public case of what is called as a pre-positioning look like. The goal is not always to flip the switch, you know. The real power here to come from the other country knowing you have the switch, in crisis you can send a quiet message and what what, we have access to your power grid, don't push things too far. It is a powerful bargaining chip and it is a very serious threat. So finally, you have to bring everything together, right? And making sure it works. Finally, you have to bring everything together, right? And making sure it works, right? And the last part, that's why we're going to discuss about a practice where you can have a best team, the best tool, but if they don't know how to work together under the pressure, they will call fail. And that is why the most important base is practice. Countries run a huge practice games or exercise to test their teams and their tool. And you know how schools have a, you know, the school have a fire drill, right? So you practice so that if a real fire happen, everyone know exactly what to do. These cyber exercises are like a giant national fire drill. In these games, you know, one team, like we called as a red team, play a role of the attacker and they use all the tricks that real world enemies use. So let me explain you what is the difference between the pen testing and red teaming. In pen testing, what happened, we have a clear scope, we have to target this, but in red teaming, the scope is not fixed. We will target the people, process and technology. Another team we called as a blue team, which has to defend the network. It is like a live test that helps them to find their own weakness and get the better in the team. I did the detailed video on that on SOC analyst, so you can check that. They also practice mixing their you know cyber plan with the real world military plan and this is called as an integration. So clearest example of this was a VSAT hack at the very beginning of 2022 invasion of Ukraine. This was not just a random attack, it was a precise, a military grade cyber operations against the satellite network. Yes, Russian operators hacked the network and sent the command that disabled the what? 10 of thousands of satellites, which is a model across the Europe. Can you imagine? And crucially, these were the same models used by the Ukrainian military for the command and control. The attack happened at 5 a.m. in the morning, February 24, and this was invasion began just one hour later. And it was a perfectly synchronized operation. So the digital attack was not a separate event, it was the first shot of the war designed blindly the enemy right before the physical attack began. And this is how the modern conflict worked. So the plan, the team, the tool, you know, getting ready and practice. And those are the five part of country complete cyber efforts, which is basically used for the cyber warfare. It is a massive, you can imagine, and expensive. And that's how it works. And things are about to get even more advanced and worse. We are now seeing the beginning of AI, artificial intelligence, machine learning, AI agentic, which being used in this attack. AI can help the attacker by analyzing the softwares and also finding a new weakness much more faster than any human. But it also helps the defender. The sheer amount of activity on the national network is like an ocean of data. And human analysts can only watch a small part of it. But can AI watch the entire ocean at once and spotting all the tiny ripples of the stealthy attacks on a human would likely miss. So next time you read the news story about the computer hack, take a moment to think about beyond the headline. Remember the Ukraine blackout? Out, the opium database, the WannaCry attack, these were just a random maps. They were moved on a global chessboard. Ask yourself, was it just a computer crime or it was a quite big, a global game that has been played around all the things on a single day shaping the world we live in. This is all from my side on this documentary. Do let me know how do you find this video. And if you want more videos like that, just type in a comment about your feedback and tell me how you find this video. If you're new to the channel, do subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss the future videos on a similar topic. Good day. Bye.